Hello, Dr. Ron England here, and I'm going to take you through, this is some really simple stuff, but we're going to go through this concept of arrays and parallel arrays using Python, and arrays are pretty simple stuff. This little guy here is an array. It's got seven slots, seven, you can count them, it starts at zero, so zero, so if you start at the counting at one, you're going to find that that final number is seven slots, and that's an array. An array is basically empty slots, integer indexed, you put the stuff in there. So in other words, if I drop a C into the slot number two, you can reference that by its index, slot number two. Just the same as if you did it in the real world and had a bunch of bins and they all had labels on them or boxes with labels on them and you put something in one of the boxes and you go to the box with that number and you can pull it out. That's it. It isn't more complicated than that. Now you can do a lot of cool stuff with them that can make them complex, but it isn't any harder than that. So please stop making it harder. A lot of people love to make a race hard. They're not. They're simple. Integer index. You throw something in the box. The box has got a number on it. You go to the box. You pull the stuff out. It's that simple. Now, here we go. I've got some stuff. In the second one, I got I put some stuff in there. I put letters, A, B, C, Oh, A, B, C, F, E, F, G. I could have put D there, but no, that would just be too simple. Anyway, um, I probably did do it in the second next, next page, but let's not go to the next page. Now, how do you declare that in a programming language? Well, you know, you want to make it simple. Python makes it simple. A is the name of my array. It's my room full of boxes. It's room A. Python is case sensitive, so room big A is not the same as room little a. And then I just put these brackets. These are the square brackets. They're on the keyboard. They're right there next to the enter key. They're next to, you know, right to the right hand side of the P. There's brackets, not the shift brackets. Those are the curly brackets. We use the square brackets for arrays in Python. Square bracket, square bracket, and then you put all the stuff in there. Now, you notice that I got everything inside of quotes. Well, they're, they're letter. I mean, they're, they're A, B, C, D. Those are letters. We call them strings in programming, but they need to be in quotes. If I had put a little A there, then it would have been looking for something totally different. In this case, it's looking for some text. We call them strings. They're right there. And this creates an array with the seven elements, A through G, and their index, as you can see right here, that A of zero, remember there is zero index, is going to be that little a. Now, Python comes in with some pretty nice little functions for you, like the len function. The len function, if I put len of a, functions, name of the function, parenthesis, arguments, close parenthesis, a is the argument, a is an array, len of a is seven. It has seven elements. If I say print len of a, it's going to print a seven. I'm going to get that seven back. But keynote, start the arrays at index zero. Easy to do. Got it? Not a problem. Should be okay here. Let's go to the next one. Oh, by the way, we don't have to put letters into the index, into the array. We can put numbers into the array. Notice in this case, the numbers do not have quotes around them. If I put quotes around them, they wouldn't be numbers. They would be, they look like numbers because, you know, they 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, but they would actually be strings if I put quotes around them. I didn't put quotes around them, they're numbers. In the programming language, I can do math with them. I can't do math with these guys, they're not numbers. I can do math with these guys, they're numbers. Okay? So, here you go, a of zero. Well, now that that first element there, which is indexed at zero, is zero. A of one is two, a of two is four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think you can figure this out. The indexes are integers. Woo -hoo. Integers, those are numbers without things at the end. There's no point something at the end of it. No, 2.3, 2.4, that's how it works. Now, this would be nice and easy if we weren't doing this for engineers. In the engineering world, things got a little bit get, got to get a little bit more complex. And the reason it's going to get complex is this concept of parallel arrays, which we use all the time in the engineering world. It's two series of numbers 
that are related to each other. But before we get into two series of numbers that are related in to each other, we got to get used to two series of numbers that are related to each other. But in this case, those two sets of numbers are going to be the indexes and the numbers. So let's go that way. So what if we actually wanted to know what a of 2.4 was? Ugh. Well, that's not an index. That's not an integer. We go back to that thing, a of 2.4, where there's a of 0, a of 1, a of 2. Whoa, hang on, a of 2.4, how can we have that? It's a of 2 is 4, and a of 3 is 6. 2.4 is in between those two. That's not, well, if your engineering mind is on and you're thinking, you're going to think, oh, well, that's just going to be a number between 4 and 6. Huh, yeah, we can do that. So how would we do that? Well, if we, if we were really thinking logically, we'd say, you know what? A of 2.4 is whatever A at 2 was plus 0.4 times whatever A of 3 is minus what of A of 2 is. So if we went back up to here, we'd say, well, what is 0, 1, 2? A of 2 is 4. All right, so now we can go back over to here. We can say, well, 0.4. Well, 0.4 times the difference between 6 and 4 is 0 0.8. 4.8. Okay, well, that we could do. Well... That's great. That's not hard to do in your head. Anybody, you know, with half a brain in mathematics can probably figure that out. But that's not the same thing as doing it on a computer. On a computer, you got to start thinking about it a little bit. So let's look at this here. We got this A of 2.4 sitting somewhere between 4 and 6. We know we've actually did it in our head. We like it's 4.8. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out. It's the you know, we even have an equation we can use. It's a of 2 plus 0.4 times a of 3 minus a of 2. We can do all that, but in a computer program, well, we said, remember, we said it was a of 2 plus the difference of a of 3 minus 2 times the 0.4 part. Well, beautifully thing about the computer programming is that you've usually got functions built in, not that you've got a right, but built in to find those numbers, such as the int function. The int function, well, guess what? It returns the int portion. So that a of 2 would just be the integer portion of 2.4. Well, what about the 0.4 portion? Well, that's not too hard either. It's 2.4 modulus 1, which is the 0.4. It removes the integer point. Okay, anybody who's done engineering mathematics should probably get an idea of what the modulus operator is, but it can actually get that 0.4 piece. Well, now we've got everything we need to do the math. Well, in Python, we've got another one, the div mod. And Python's kind of unique in that it can actually return more than one number from a function. It returns both the 2 and the 0.4. Now, a little bit tricky here in that the div mod returns the 2 portion as a float, not as an integer, where the int function returns the 2 as an integer, not a float. And a float does have decimal places, but it returns it as a 2. Then I can always convert that 2 into the integer portion of the 2 if I wanted to. I would just round it to 2, okay, because it's already 2. So if you wanted to do the math, and I'm not going to do the math, okay, I students are going to figure this out and write their computer programs to do their stuff. I'm just giving them a head start here. But this isn't too terribly hard to do. Great. Not a problem. Oh, wait. What if we wanted to go the other way? What if instead of being given the index and figuring out what was in that slot, we were given the number that was in the slot, and we needed to get back to the index? All right. Well, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to look at some real code. Oh, wait. Let's make it so that you can see this real code. Okay. Here it is. Ba -ba -ba. Um, I could blow it up, but I'll blow it up in my, in my post-production stuff. All right, here I've got an A, and it's filled with a bunch of numbers. What can I do? Well, what I could do, as long as these numbers are all increasing, if I was given one of the numbers, I could go, well, let's, for example, in this case, I got a 0.5. I could go, well, is it A, is, is it a of 0? Okay, the number that's 0.5 needs to match up with the numbers up here. So a of 0 is 0, it's bigger than that. a of 0.4 is 0.4, and that's a of 1 is 0.4. 0.5 is bigger than that, so let's go. Oh, wait, now the next one of a of 
In this case, a of 2 is 0.6. It's bigger than that, so it's between a of 1 and a of 2. Well, you kind of might have seen what I was doing there. That's called an algorithm. That's a process that you got to follow to get an answer. That's kind of one of those things that's it's not unique to computer programming, but it is part of computer programming, figuring out a way to get to where you want to be by actually doing a set of steps. Now, I'm going to go through some things here that uh, some, some functions that you may or may not know, but I've got the ability to say, let's start at zero and go all the way up to the length of A, and let's just ask a few questions. First, is a of i equal to the number I'm looking for, in this case 0.5. If it is, then that's your index. i is your index, boom, so I set v equal to i, and I say that's your done, we're done, hit the brakes. Now, this other one is a little bit different. If a of i is greater than the x, in other words, you've gotten past the number that you were looking for, we're going to go, you know what? It's between that one and the one before it. Got that? Between the index is between that number and the one before it. Now, what this four is going to do is it's just going to go through try zero, try one, try two, try three. When you hit this break, you're saying, ha, I found it. I don't need to keep going. I've got it. So now, here we go. We got a little bit of an interpolation thing going on here. V is equal to, okay, I minus 1. That would be the index before it plus X minus A of I minus 1 over A of I minus A of I minus 1. Hmm, what is that? Well, it's the number minus the one before it. Then the two indexes subtracted from each other. In other words, it's how far along you are between those two numbers. All right, well, let's just do this. Let's go... Booyah, let's run it. I'm going to have to move this over here so you can see it. There's your booyah. Well, great, now I just made it too big so that you can't see it anymore. Okay, now we're over here. Well, you know what? I can probably zoom in on this. And if you look down here, it said, uh, look, index of uh, x at 0.5 is 1.5. All right, let's go back over and see if that even makes any sense to us. Okay, x of 0.5 is 1.5. Well, if you look at this, that's index 0, that's index 1. 0.5 is between 1 and 2. It's halfway between 1.2 and 2. That would be 1.5. I checked it. Now, is this going to work for every scenario? Absolutely not, because I'm not solving for every scenario. I've got students who are going to be doing this for homework, and they got to do some other stuff, and I don't want to give the pie away. They've got to do some work. Oh, by the way, here's some examples of that A, B, the modulus, and the div mod. Ah, great. All right, so let's go back to my uh, lecture slides here. They're going to be big. And let's talk a little bit about this. So you saw some code right there that let you, okay, wait. We figured out how to take an in index that wasn't an integer and find the value. We figured out how to take the value and find the integer. Well, now we can solve parallel arrays. Am I going to do it? Absolutely not. But you got everything you need. You know, I gave you all the pieces here. Here's an array. It's not an integer index. It's got integers in it, but it's not, you know, one, 0, 1, 2, 3. Here's another array. Now, let's suppose you're looking at the first array, and you're looking at the number, let's say, 9. Well, the 9 is between the 7 and the 11 meaning the number in the other array that would be corresponding with the number between the 7 and 11 would be between 0.6 and 1.3. Well, how far between the 0.6 and the 1.3? Well, in this case, the 9 is pretty easy because 9 is halfway between 7 and 11. So the other number in this array, by the way, called the parallel array, should be halfway between the 0.6 and the 1.3. Now, you could probably figure that out in your head, 0.4 plus 0.3 is 0.7, so half of that's 0.35, you add the 0.35 to the 0.6, you get 0.95, boom, done, but you need to be able to solve it quickly for every situation. There you go, arrays, in a nutshell, 
a little bit of programming in a nutshell. The concept of non-integer indexing where you got to do interpolation. The concept of parallel arrays where you've got interpolation going in both directions. You got it. That can get you a long way in a lot of calculations in the engineering world. Just that basic stuff right there. It may take a little bit of time to wrap your head around it, but wrap your head around it. This is stuff that you're going to use over and over again. Okay, got it? On out. Hope you had a good, hope this helps you out a lot. You know, you want to get the concept first, worry about the programming later, but good coding. Hopefully see you out there soon.